course, it is now time to enter the age of light. And in this new era, we can finally gather around the tree of origin once again, united, to celebrate all wonders of fiction and the heroes it brings forth. It is not luck that brought you here. Oh no, you are all blessed with the very same inner compass that stubbornly pointed you to this very forest glade. In a way, you were destined for greatness. The forces of nature are hard at work, for two universes are about to collide. Look closely. The forest is already empty, bracing itself tightly with its roots, sending its magical vapors through the night sky. It is already sensing the impending surge of shared passion and the sound waves of a thousand hearts beating as one. We can feel your fandom magic, ready to finally erupt and shatter its walls, bursting positive auras and that old familiar warmth once more. So, follow now, for the fog of fiction will soon be lifted, and your hero will step forward to greet you. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see who we will find in the origin tree. Oh, I sense chills, battles, and torment, who could not so torment but I still want to just slap them to I'm really odd. Indeed. I guess, I guess, I see you now over there through the foliage. Ladies, knights, commoners, and noblemen, a true that requires your attention. I hope you paid your debts, because here is the character you would love to hate. But also the actor you love to love. Jack Gleason. Maybe that's gonna happen tonight. 
the grass here or something. Uh, but no, so thankfully everybody I meet, everybody I have met is really polite and nice and courteous and friendly. Um, so I, I don't think anybody, I mean, somebody might come up to me and say, I hate you, but I miss you on the show, or, you know, I hated your guts as Joffrey, but it's always friendly and jovial. It's never serious, like, I've never met anyone who is honestly, like, angry with me for killing Ned Stark or something. That would be pretty, uh, pretty demented. <laughs> so, but if there anyone is, you know, if anyone is here upset with me, I am sorry, um, but I can't take it back. Uh, so yeah, thankfully everyone's really nice. Alright, thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. So, my question for you was, you yeah, know, we were talking about how you were into the emergence for me. Would you ever participate in a musical? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, wow, because I, I used to do little musicals when I was a kid, like, I can't really dance and I can't really sing, but I do love musicals, I love watching musicals, and as I say, when I was a kid I used to be in little amateur, amateur productions, <laughs> I think I'd be too nervous to sing and dance, jeez, um, I don't know, are there any musicals that you like at the moment? Um, not really, I'm um, more watching shows and movies right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that there are, they are making more... I feel like there are a few musical, big musical films coming out, but um, I think I'd have to be auto-tuned quite a lot. I think they'd have to do a lot of work in post-production to make them sound better. Maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe after a few Belgian beers, I'll give you a better answer. I'll be dancing, <laughs> singing and stuff. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Jack. Hello. Um, so, my po I have two questions. Uh, my first question is, when I watched the scene where you were in your dad's bed and your parents, Jamie and Cersei, like your mom was crying, but then uh, Jamie was holding me. And it, when I watched the scene, I was wondering, it's like by the way, one of my favorite scenes because it's so effed up. Like, I was wondering what was going on in your head. I know you were dead, but like as an actor, what was going on in your head? Well, it's, it's, funny, it's funny you ask because that was one of my favorite days of filming. <laughs> Not for the reason you might think, but because all I had to do was like lie down. And you know, you get up really early to film and all you kind of want to do is like lie down and close your eyes. And all I had to do that day was lie down and close my eyes. But to the point where I was too relaxed and sometimes I'd actually like doze off into a sleep or into a nap. And then kind of wake up like that and they'd be acting and like they'd be filming. Uh, so I'd like wake up halfway through a scene. <laughs> I just be like snoring away while they're yeah having sex or whatever. Yeah, I was also thinking he's probably like, oh, finally I'm done. I'm just dead. Yeah, yeah, I can just relax. Um, that is a really weird scene, though. That is a really weird scene. But what was going through my mind to answer your question was absolutely nothing because I was asleep. <laughs> Thanks. My second question was. Uh, a really amazing actor, like sometimes I wanted to punch the screen because I hated you so much, but that just shows how amazing you were as an actor. So I just wanted to ask you just like advice because I've done like theater school and I've been to uh, school theater. So I just want to ask uh, advice like how do you prepare yourself to play a character so perfectly? Oh, well, thank you very much. Um... I don't know if I can really answer that. Um, like, like say with the character Joffrey, it's like the the performance I gave in the audition, the characterization I had in the audition is more or less like the characterization that I had throughout the TV show. Obviously, you're you're helped a lot by the directors. The directors will will give you direction and tell you to take a scene in a certain in a certain way and you're helped by your fellow actors who bring 
your character to life, the more that they bring their characters to life. But sometimes, sometimes, I don't think I did have to work that much on the characterization. It just came into my head. And sometimes you're just lucky and you read a character on a script and something just clicks and you feel like, yeah, this feels so right. Other times you do have to prepare a lot. And when, when you're in those situations, I would recommend just reading the script over and over again, reading it with the other actors as much as possible, talking to the other actors about how they feel about their characters and the plot and just talking and talking and talking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And a, a little thing I like to do is is think about what the character does when they're bored or think about what the character does when they've got nothing to do or like what do they think about first thing in the morning or what do they think about in the shower what do they think about when they're not thinking dramatic thoughts like that you usually see on TV and film and stage so try and like ground them in like boring stuff like what do they like to have in the you know what don't they like what don't they like to eat in the morning and uh, what kind of annoys them just normal things that we all have in our day to day life and just try and think about those things Hi Jack. Hello. I agree with most people here that you're a good actor. I know most people talk about Joffrey Roy you did, but for me, I thought you were fantastic in the starring role as Little Boy oh. at that begins. I just wondered how you got into character of that little boy and also what it was like working with Mr. Bale. Thank you. Um, by the way, I love your I love your shoes. Your name is Strange. Yeah, yeah. You're really good looking guy. Okay? It's my uh, manager. <laughs> uh, yeah, to get into the character of Little Boy, um, that took about five years experience of being a little boy. Uh, I really had to uh, get my head into the very dark mind of that little boy. I saw him as a very troubled, very angry, very violent little boy. Um, so I had to do, you know, I would listen to Eminem a lot before I would go to, I would go to set. And working with Christian Bale, you know, we, we, you know, we shared a lot in common. I showed him my, my workout routine because I was on a very strict workout routine at the time. Um, I was only eating bananas. Uh, so we shared a lot in our process and in our preparation. But I remember he said to me, I was about nine years old, and he said, Jack, I don't think I've ever met an actor that prepares like you. I, you're, you're the greatest actor I've ever met, basically. He said that to me. And I said, Christian, you're embarrassing me. And he said, no, 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 I mean it. And he looked at me and he said, I'll never forget you. And um, that's the last time I saw him. <laughs> Obviously, a problem as a person, but he's also a teenager. Yeah. And I was wondering, what are your thoughts on that combination? I would make that point all the time. Yeah, yeah. That uh, perhaps he has similar impulses that all teenagers have, which is wanting to rebel against authority, wanting to push limits, wanting understanding what boundaries are. It's just in his context, instead of like going and drinking a beer in the park with his friends, he's like, you know, decapitating people. So, slightly different states. But I think there is a sense where who the character is is intrinsically linked with him being a young person, being a teenager, um, who has been given too much power, you know, who hasn't been given a, a, a good, a, any good role models hasn't been given enough, um, uh, you know, discipline. So, there is that side to it now. I don't know if that explains all of his actions, but I think, I think a lot of people put in a situation where they're given ultimate power would maybe end 
end up acting not too dissimilar to how Joffrey acts because uh, power is very corrupting and we all think of ourselves as like well behaved people who have morals and principles but if somebody like tells you that you're the ruler of everything and you can do anything you want especially at a young age you're probably going to be an asshole you know so <laughs> um, yeah I'm glad that I wasn't a king when I was uh, when I was that age. Thank you. Here. This might be a bit of a controversial question, but what did you think of the ending? Ah, yeah. Well, I I kind of have a get out of jail free card because I I didn't see the ending. I didn't I didn't really watch Game of Thrones that much. Um, mainly at the start because I didn't like watching myself on screen and then I just wasn't in tune with one of the plot lines then afterwards and a lot of my friends watched it and they were like you have to watch the final season so I saw a few episodes but obviously a lot of people were disappointed and that's a shame but uh, I guess it just went downhill ever since I left the show. <laughs> What did you think of the, the final season? Personally, I didn't like it. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree, but uh, I suppose we have the prequel to look forward to, the new TV show, and maybe George R. R. Martin will write a book at some point. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's always sad. I don't know how you do endings. Endings are so hard. Like. I guess Harry Potter was a pretty good ending. I'm trying to think of like good endings and bad endings. Yeah, I don't know what to say other than um fuck that. I have like the most generic question mm -hmm. but if you could like redo any work that you have spent with the knowledge you have now, which one would it be and what would you do? In, 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 oh, sorry, could, could you repeat the question? Sorry. If you could redo any role that you have played oh. with the knowledge you have now, which one would you redo and what would you do differently? Interesting. Interesting. Um, I'd probably redo every single part I played, you know, so you're never a bit of a perfectionist. I'm uh, never really happy, but. Um, I guess I did a I did a play recently. Um, I checked off play the sequel, and uh, I don't know what I'd do differently. I guess, but maybe I wasn't that happy with my performance. Maybe I'd be a bit more subtle with my performance. The director kept uh, telling me to like be more intense and more intense, and I kind of had to do what she she wanted, but. I didn't think that it was right for the part. So maybe if I had my way, I'd be a bit more subtle in my performance of that character in, uh, in the sequel. Hey Jack, how's it going? Good. Um, so, anyway, I haven't watched a lot of Game of Thrones myself, so I wanted to ask a question more about uh, the work part of it here in acting on it. So, what would you consider your most memorable or informative experience that you had when working on the show? As an actor, um, like, there aren't any moments that, 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 that strike me. It's more like what I was saying before about working with really talented actors and specifically working with really good directors and for me that's a big part of it it's like if I have a good director who can bring out the best performance in me then uh, then I'm going to perform better and maybe that's like a lesson that you have to learn in a way um, how to take direction you know because you're, 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 you're an actor yourself are you or no you're not but um, 
I would just say that uh, it can be quite difficult to know how to do what the director wants you to do and when you work with very skilled directors who are very good at communicating and they know how to translate something in a way that you will understand then that, you know, that makes you a, you know, a better performer so I think uh, <laughs> the best thing to do is just uh, find a really good director but I learned from them how to take direction and so on. Which character of Game of Thrones can you relate to most and why? Oh, um, maybe Tyrion, because I can be a bit sarcastic and I'm a bit cynical and I like drinking. Um, yeah, all of his bad qualities, I don't think I have any of his good qualities. Like, uh, courage and intellect or anything like that. Just kind of being a bit sarcastic. <laughs> what about you? Do you have a character that you uh, relate to? Uh, also, Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys Targaryen, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a dragon, she has a dragon, so I get that too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I was just wondering um, how much were you involved in the development of your character um, in the sense that how he speaks, how he moves, etc. Ah, um, that's an interesting question. I would say, I would say very involved. I mean, uh, like I read the first book, um, yeah, it's called Game of Thrones, right? In the, the first book of the series. Um, and so I, I would read, and the second one, or I skimmed through the second one, and I would read uh, how George R. R. Martin described the character. And, you know, he would say, Joffrey has pouty lips, you know, I don't really have pouty lips, but that, that would be something that I would have in my, the back of my brain, like maybe you could pout a bit. Uh, so I would, I would get little tips from the books, and then, in terms of the physical characterization, that can come honestly just from the costume, you know. I'd wear these boots with quite high heels, so you'd kind of you'd kind of have to walk like that, you know, a bit, bit more regal, and the costumes that they have you wear make you stand up very straight, and then if you're wearing the crown, that's gonna slip and slide, so you kinda of, you're almost like forced to like walk like this, you know, even if you don't intend to. Um, so the costume can help a lot in terms of the characterization. And what else? Or even like, say like sitting on the Iron Throne, um, I guess it's kind of like, you know, I kind of had this kind of slouchy thing. But that was just because I didn't really fit on the throne and I couldn't, I couldn't like sit upright. So I kind of had to slouch. So sometimes things like that, they, uh, they just come out of the environment that you're in and you just adapt within it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So I have a question. Since you said you like drinking and you've been in Belgium for yes. a few days, have you got the chance to try some Belgian beers or not? I absolutely have. I love them. Which ones did you drink? I had, uh, forgive my pronunciation, uh, Steenig? Is that it? How do you, how do you say it? I don't think I know that one. Steen Ulk. Steen Ulke. Steen Ulke. Um, that was really nice. Um, there's another one that began with O U Ust I can't remember. But they're all they're all so nice. Uh, obviously like shoe flats and shoe flats nice. Uh, <laughs> the over there. Uh, <laughs> they've already had a few beers this afternoon. Um, but like, I'm like a kid in a candy shop, you know, I'm supposed to try every single one. There are too many, too many beers. I can't try them all. Also, Delirium, I mean, I don't know. 
the, the list goes on. Do you recommend anyone? I've heard mass, uh, mass is good. Yes, that's very good, but one of my favorites is called Triple Cannon Lead. So, I, triple, triple, triple Cannon Lead. You'll have to write that down for me. Triple, Triple Cannon Lead. Yes, Triple Cannon Lead. Okay. It's very good. I don't think I'll be able to say that after a few Triple Cannon Lead. So, <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Hello. If you could pick one movie or TV show that was ever made, which one would you like to play? Have to play? Ah. I mean, it's too, it's too hard to answer. Maybe anything, anything sci-fi or fantasy. You know, I really, really like sci-fi. Um. So I'm trying to think of like. What's a good sci-fi? Obviously, they remade they remade Blade Runner recently. Um, I kind of I almost like prefer the sci-fi aesthetic of the past. Like, obviously, it's amazing. A film like Dune, you know, it has one of this, this, these beautiful shots. But my aesthetic is more like. Um, Labyrinth or something like that. I really like. Maybe if they, yeah, I'd love to be a labyrinth. So, you know, the, the, with David Bowie and uh, Rachel Connelly. So, yeah. so it's like an eighties science fiction, science fantasy film. Uh, uh, this is a question related to Game of Thrones, but what kind of music do you listen to? Oh, cool. Um, I listen to all kinds of music, really. Um, I listen to a lot of 90s indie, um, like American grunge, indie rock. I also really like folk, like American folk, Irish folk, English folk. Um, I like hip hop, I like rap, I like, you know, harp music. I, I, don't, know, I don't know any Belgian, I don't know much Belgian music. Would you recommend any? No, no, oh, you so sorry, you got a Wu-Tang, you got a Wu-Tang uh, jumper, nice man. Yeah, I'm a fan, so... Nice, nice. Um, all the Belgian music suck. I, I don't know, I don't know. In general, yeah, I don't think it does. But like, you have some kind of music that's good when you're drunk, but otherwise it just sucks. Okay. Like, uh, Dance of Slagas, that's what it's called, but it really sucks. Nice, yeah. I love Dance of Slagas. Beer. You probably should try Stella. It's one of the best beers. Stella and Clark. I guess I love I do love Stella and I drink Stella all the time, but I can get Stella where I live, you know, in Dublin or in London. So I I, I drink a lot of Stella, but uh, I, now that I'm here I want to like try ones that I can't get anywhere else. But yeah, love Stella. Cold to to Stella. Thank you. And just a few minutes for you, because you mentioned Harry Potter earlier. Uh, which class are you? Ooh, well this is this is a uh, up for debate really. Because I did the Pottermore test, right? But then I and then I I think but then I did it again and I got a different answer. I guess that happens. You should probably just go with the first one. But I can't remember. I if I was to choose myself because you are kind of allowed to choose, aren't you? The Sorting Hat says you, you have a say in it, or you. Um, if I could choose, I would choose to be in Hufflepuff. Oh, yes, the Puff Crew. It's nice to have you in my house then. Oh, great. I'll see you. I'll see you in the common room. Which is, which is never described, apparently. Apparently that's the only common room in, in Hogwarts that you never hear about what it's like. Is that true? Does anybody know? You know? Yeah. So it's a mystery. The Hufflepuff common room. What's going on in there? Why does not JK really want us to know? What's happened? Yeah. Should you receive it? Hey, Jack. Hello. Yesterday you said you were fluent in Irish. 
So I told you. I did not speak that. I said, I'm terrible at Irish. I can't speak it. So I did tell you I would try to speak okay. Irish. That's so right. Either I'm going to insult your mother or I will give the compliment I wanted to give. So here it goes. Is via Iotak tu. Oh, Korean Magnus. He said, Is car Iotak tu, which means you're a great guy. Uh, I don't know. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Jack Mason!